Hey everybody, I'm so excited to be with you, to have a new video to share with you. I know it's been a while. Uh, most of you know I'm a full-time art teacher, so naturally a lot of my time is going to be spent doing that, doing demos for my students. But this year I had decided that, come what may, I wanted to do a large-scale painting of my own during the school year. And I was thinking about what I wanted to do. Now you know that I love wildlife and landscapes. In fact, landscapes often take precedence over wildlife in my paintings, but once or twice in the past, I've done what I would call a hero shot of an animal, a chance for them to stand front and center and really be a powerful part of the picture. Now, I also love to paint birds of prey, but I realized I had never done a hero shot for an eagle or a hawk. Now, recently, I had a really cool opportunity to photograph a number of different birds of prey. One of them is called a Harris hawk, or Harris's hawk. And as soon as I saw it, I really just fell in love with the coloration of the plumage, the intensity of the animal, and I decided I really wanted to get it into a painting. So I decided that I would do a hero shot of a Harris hawk. So let's take a look at how I did that. The wild landscape of Big Bend is a perfect setting for the Harris Hawk. But for this painting, I want to be careful that the setting doesn't outshine the hero shot that I want to create. I finally pick out two photos that I will use for the foreground, middle ground, and background. I will always create a compositional sketch before beginning a large painting. For this piece, the landscape is going to play a secondary role to a strong foreground. So my main goal with the sketch is to really nail down the placement of the hawk and the branch. Figuring out the values or the lights and the darks in a sketch like this can really help out before starting the final. Now it's time to tone the canvas. This serves the purpose of removing that bright white, which can make getting the correct values extremely difficult. I also like this warm oxide red as it works really well with the rich blue of the sky. As always, I have divided my canvas up using the golden ratio, and I'll use these guidelines to pencil in the final design. So let's get this painting underway. Here I'm using a diluted burnt umber to put in the values and model the major shapes in the painting. I'll speed this up a bit so we can get to the color. Now I like choosing dynamic skies for my paintings, and this one will have a lot of color variety. Still, I try to keep my palette pretty simple to start off, and I'll primarily use ultramarine blue, phthalo blue, and Payne's gray, with some burnt umber and cobalt teal to help with the warmer tones. Here I'm taking some color samples from my actual reference image, to help with my color mixing. Now, if you've painted before, you probably know that paint dries darker than it first appears when it's still wet. When this area had dried, I decided that I needed to brighten this up a little bit from where it was. I'll sometimes go over portions of my skies multiple times, as I ended up having to do with this one but it is worth it to get it right. I'll finish off this session by putting down a dark undercoat for the desert floor. Here we go again. I really want the hawk to stand out and not be lost in a dark background, so I'm lightening up the sky one last time. At the end of the day, those hidden layers will still impact the surface and add a richness to the overall painting. 
I'm always amazed at how many colors are hidden in the clouds. I try to paint the first pass on all my clouds in one sitting so I can blend while the paint is still wet. But this means that I had to mix 10 different tones all at once to pull this off. For the sake of time, I'll speed this section up as well, but in a nutshell, what I'm trying to accomplish here isn't just getting the colors in place, but also finding a nice balance between detail and simplicity, because I don't want those clouds to be so refined that they stand out and take away from the hawk. Now I can move on to the body of the hawk. I'll start by establishing my darks first, and then I'll introduce those awesome warm tones in the plumage. It is tempting to start refining details right now, but I'll go ahead and leave the wings a bit rough for the moment and then add additional details in a second pass. I'll continue with my method of mixing up every color I think that I'll need for a certain area. Now here's the palette that I mixed for the beak and the talons. Those bright yellows will really help create a strong focal point. One way you can emphasize your focal point is to actively minimize detail in the rest of the painting. Now, I'll admit I do struggle to do this sometimes, but I will try to craft my focal point as precisely as I can so that it will stand out compared to the rest of the painting. Now it's time to cover the last bit of underpainting and get this branch filled in. My reference photo for the branch was actually taken in direct sunlight around midday, so getting it to match the rest of my scene is going to be a challenge. When I was hiking in Big Bend, I first noticed this tree because of the really cool spiraling effect that the wood grain had, so I'm going to try to capture that in my brush strokes. Normally, I will work my paintings from back to front and leave the foreground to the very end but I decided to refine the hawk a little bit more before moving back to the sky. There are some really interesting distant clouds that I've been waiting to put in. Those hazy reds and golds along the horizon in late evenings have always been a favorite of mine.
Finally, it's time to put in the desert terrain. There was actually quite a lot of green at the time that I took this picture, so the challenge was to keep the ground in shadow and not let those greens get too bright or too saturated. Again, I'm choosing to add a little more detail and some more brightness to the center of the image. I'm leaving the outside edges darker and less refined. This kind of creates a vignette effect and helps push the eye back towards that central figure of the hawk. I'm going over the tree once more, and that's just one of many areas that I'll be revisiting around my canvas. Oil painting is all about building up those layers to get the desired effect. I will use various mixtures of mineral spirits and linseed oil as I create additional details and adjust the tones and colors around the canvas. Here I'm collecting some paint on the edge of the brush so that I can go in and add some actual texture to the canvas. I like those foreground elements to have some tactile and three-dimensional qualities to them. Taking this project on while still teaching was definitely challenging, but I'm really happy to have been able to feature this awesome bird in a painting. So what should I paint next? Let me know in the comments below, and as always, thank you so much for watching.